Hello world, Tinker Tom DIY here. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at all these 18650 cells that are going to go into the portable mini Powerwall project. Um, as you've heard over the last several videos, I've sourced these cells from several different places. And we're going to start off with the first cells that I sourced, which were these Samsung branded cells um, that was obtained from a Dell branded laptop battery pack that had six cells in it. Uh, and I pulled out all six cells and tested them for capacity and each one of them came out with a capacity between 1750 and 1850 milliamp hour um, now this was from a decommissioned laptop battery pack um, and so it's probably safe to assume that these cells were relatively well used for that laptop uh, and was no longer performing as well as it could for the laptop which is why it was replaced with a new battery pack um, so all of these cells tested out considerably under 2000 milliamp hour which was a bit of a disappointment uh, because I was hoping that there would be at least a 2000 milliamp hour to go into this battery pack that I was planning to build with 2200 milliamp hour cells um, so all six cells that came out of um, that Dell laptop pack were a bit of a disappointment um, and I did end up, end up using the two highest rated ones which I'll talk about in a little bit um, so these were my results from a used Dell laptop battery pack and how that worked out. Um, and then laying around the house, I've had these red label and yellow label Ultra Fire 18650s as well. Now I've had these for several years and I use these to power uh, flashlights. Uh, these red wrappers were rated at uh, 3000 milliamp hour. And when they tested, they actually tested out pretty well at um, 2191 on this cell and the other one tested out somewhere in, in the same vicinity. So these, uh, you know, tested out at my target 2200 milliamp hour, which was great. Uh, however, these red cells and the yellow ones for that matter, um, they're a slightly different design here on top, uh, as you can see. And these cells are about two to three millimeters taller which means when we go to try to put them in a battery pack with the cell holders, it won't cause, it'll cause the battery pack to not lay down flat. Uh, and I do want it to be flat, so uh, I was actually encouraged to try using these Ultra Fire red cells here um, because they tested so well uh, within range of what I wanted. Uh, but because of their physical size, I can't use them, that would, which was quite unfortunate. And that's why I ended up having to use two of the cells that came out of that Dell laptop battery pack. Um, and then looking at the yellow cells from Ultrafire, these were rated at 3600 milliamp hours, so higher than the red cells were. But when these tested, these tested far worse, both about 1620 milliamp hour um, so both very far away from their rated capacity and I'm not even sure I'm going to continue using these two yellow cells for flashlight use um, because that's a rather discouraging amount of um, capacity that was tested for these cells now the cells that came out of the 36 volt eBay packs uh, that were Samsung cells these tested all great uh, they all tested out between 2200 and 2300 milliamp hours, so they were spot on uh, what I hoped that they would be when I was planning to build out this pack. Um, so these are great, and I'm using 20 of these, I'm sorry, I'm using 40 of these to go into this pack, which is a total of 60 cells. Um, so these tested out great, really confident with using these cells that came out of those eBay 36 volt packs which were obtained for $1.25 each. These turned out to be uh, a really good bargain for, for what they are. Um, and then um, these were the purple cells that came out of that Chinese produced laptop battery pack that I grabbed off of Amazon. Uh, and I think these were about $1.60 each when I priced them new uh, from Amazon. And uh, the first battery that I tested that had nine cells in it all nine batteries tested out between 2300 and 2400 milliamp hour, which was great. They actually exceeded a little bit further than past what I was planning on having to run in this battery pack. And I was so encouraged by the test results of the first set that I ordered a second battery. Uh, so that gave me 18 additional batteries to go into this battery pack. 
I went ahead and tested all nine that came out of the second pack uh, because I thought it was a bit odd that the box that the that the new laptop battery came in looked different, was not nearly as polished of a branded box as the first one was. In fact, the second box was almost a very brown, plain brown box that had very little markings on it. Now, the, the laptop casing itself um, had all the same markings. It had the same layout, I mean, you know, the correct voltage and correct mile amp hour that I had looked at before. And even all the markings here on the batteries themselves were the same. Um, but when I tested out the cells that came from that second pack, all of them tested out uh, between 1900 and 2000 milliamp hour. So um, right there on the bubble of really what I really wanted to try using uh, in this battery pack, and there was nine of them, which is a fair amount of the battery pack itself. So that was a little bit of a disappointment, but I decided to go ahead and continue using them anyways uh, because they were close to the capacities that I was hoping to achieve. So um, I can't necessarily say I would 100% recommend um, using um, these cells from that Chinese made laptop battery from Amazon. Uh, if you're trying to build small projects, um, maybe if it was a very small project where all nine cells would go right into what you're doing, that would give you a pretty good indication that they were well matched, because they were. Uh, all the cells that came out of the first battery pack were well matched to each other. All the cells that came out of the second battery pack were, were well matched to each other. Uh, but the cells between the two packs, you know, there was a good 300 or so milliamp hour capacity difference between them. So um, it's still an option. Just be cautious of what you're planning on expecting to get out of those packs. So um, with that said, I now have um, this battery pack fully ready to go with all 20 cells. Again, I am using uh, 40 of the Samsung cells that came out of the 36 volt eBay packs. I'm using 18 of the purple no-name cells that came out of that Chinese produced pack from Amazon. And then I'm using two cells, which are these here, which came out of the Dell laptop. And these uh, tested out at like 1820 or 1840 milliamp hour. So not every cell is at my target 2200 milliamp hour, but I have some that are upwards of 23. I have a couple in the 18s. I have a f several that are in the, the 19 range. Um, so when it all balances out, it'll, it'll work out well enough to, you know, to be able to calculate my battery capacities based on a, a 2200 milliamp hour average. Um, it's probably a little less than that, but I don't fully intend to put a high load for an ex for very long periods of time uh, on this system. So I'm not requiring you know very specific time targets uh, for this battery pack to work. I just want it to to work well, not cause any issues where cells are getting too hot because they were discharged. Um, quicker than the others and maybe other cells are having to now trying to charge that one cell to kind of keep everything in a, a balance across the cell um, and if you can pay attention here to the way I've got the cells configured in this pack I've got all of these uh, first four rows or first four columns here I guess to your view uh, would be negative side up I've got these middle four columns with positive side up and the last four columns uh, set to the negative side up. And so they're facing in opposite directions. And so what I'm intending to do when I go to, to wire this in series for a 12 volt battery pack, uh, I'm going to be taking these negatives and these positives and grouping them all together. On the other side, I will then be taking these negatives and these positives, grouping them all together with wire uh, so that it will create an even flow of power from this positive side that will go up through these cells, come back down through the middle set of cells, and come over to the right set of cells and back up before it leaves out to the positive and the negative of this battery pack. And so we'll take a closer look at how I construct um, the, the wiring for this battery pack because I don't plan to use uh, copper bus bars. In fact, I plan on using 
a 14 gauge silicone wire with uh, fine wire fuses on each cell, both positive and negative side. And so I'll give you guys a closer look on how I actually do that. One last thing before I wrap up the video here is I wanted to call out these cells that are wrapped with uh, blue um, wrapper. Um, the second set of batteries that I pulled out of those eBay 36 volt packs, um, they were so maybe glued together or somehow they were adhered together because as I was trying to pry them apart from their packs, um, the, the wrapping was damaged and I did not want to put naked sales cells into this battery pack. Uh, so I went on Amazon and ordered uh, a package of, of 400 some odd, I think, um, wrappers that came in different colors. I chose blue to go in here just because. And it was kind of interesting to, to, to rewrap these cells and put these white isolators back into the positive side to make sure that uh, it makes it a lot harder for the positive terminal to get grounded to the negative side of the battery because the entire case, side of the case of these 18650 batteries is actually negative. It's just uh, the, the tiny little spot here on the top that of course creates the positive side of the battery. So uh, do be prepared that you, if you go through and you're harvesting cells from those eBay 36 volt packs, um, that you might have to rewrap some of your cells um, so that they have a clean presentation to them. And as you can tell, I had to go back in with a razor blade and kind of clean some up because the, the edges were curling up in the center and I wanted to try to have as flat and smooth of a surface as possible um, to make it easier for myself when I go to just solder on both ends of these batteries. So that's a look at the batteries, how well they've tested, what's going into this uh, 12 volt source. Again, I'm expecting the capacity of this uh, 60 cells here in this pack will be somewhere in the neighborhood of 450 watt hours to 500 watt hours. Um, so that's actually quite a bit of power and can run um, even a modest load for like a 100 watt load for a fan and a LED lamp. It'll run that for several hours. Uh, it'll run it for four to five hours easily. Uh, and then of course you can see the inverter back there um, which we are actually going to take, which we are going to talk about in more detail, and I'll unbox it, show you, give you guys a tour of that in the next video. So, with that, please make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment on this video. I love the engagement from you guys, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Also, look in the video description. I've got links to Amazon using my Amazon affiliate link, uh, and any purchase that you make using that affiliate link will help to fund the channel and help fund future projects like this. It includes any new tooling or any new little parts that I might need to continue moving these projects forward. And as I learn about those road bumps, I'll make sure I share those with you guys. So with that, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.